The Red Death had long held its relentless grip on the country, spreading its fatal and hideous presence. Blood was its avatar, and its seal, the redness and horror of blood. It brought sharp pains, sudden dizziness, and profuse bleedings, sealing the fate of its victims in a matter of moments. The scarlet stains marked the condemned, isolating them from aid and sympathy. In the midst of this epidemic, Prince Prospero remained dauntless and sagacious. With his dominions ravaged, he gathered a thousand friends from the remaining knights and dames of his court, and retreated to the seclusion of a grand abbey of his own design. Walled in and fortified, the courtiers welded the gates shut, leaving no means for despair from without or frenzy from within. The abbey was a haven, amply provisioned to defy the contagion. While the external world grappled with the Red Death inside, the prince ensured pleasure and security. Buffoons, improvisatory, ballet dancers, musicians, cards, beauty, and wine, all within the protective walls. Outside loomed the Red Death. As months passed in seclusion, the Prince Prospero decided to host a grand masked ball for his thousand friends. The revelry was set in seven imperial chambers, each with its unique atmosphere. The rooms twisted and turned, revealing novel effects at every corner. Gothic windows with stained glass added to the surreal ambiance, matching the predominant color scheme of each chamber. The seventh room, shrouded in black velvet, defied the pattern, with scarlet stained windows casting a blood-colored hue. In the absence of lamps or candles, fire-filled tripods in the corridors illuminated the rooms, creating gaudy and fantastic appearances. In the westernmost chamber, a gigantic ebony clock swung its pendulum with a dull, heavy clang. Its chimes, clear and deep, interrupted the festivities, casting a momentary disconcert among the guests. The masked revelry reached its peak at a masquerade of unusual magnificence, the prince's guiding taste evident in every detail. Grotesque and dazzling costumes filled the seven chambers, where dreams seemed to materialize and intertwine with the wild music. The revelry continued until the twelfth hour approached. As the clock struck twelve, a sudden hush fell over the assembly. A mysterious figure shrouded in the habiliments of the grave emerged. Tall and gaunt, the masked figure resembled a corpse, and its scarlet dabbled vesture evoked the horrors of the Red Death. The revelers, initially disapproving, turned to terror and disgust. Prince Prospero, convulsed with a mixture of terror and rage, demanded the unmasking and punishment of the intruder. However, an eerie silence pervaded the assembly, and none dared to confront the figure. The spectral intruder moved gracefully through each chamber, from blue to purple, green to orange, white to violet, seemingly untouched by the onlooker's fear. In a fit of rage, Prince Prospero pursued the intruder through the chambers, brandishing a dagger. However, at the threshold of the violet chamber, the figure turned and faced him. A sharp cry pierced the air as the dagger dropped and the prince fell dead. The revelers, filled with horror, rushed into the black chamber, only to find the corpse-like mask and grave cerements void of any tangible form. The Red Death had infiltrated their haven. One by one, the revelers succumbed to the relentless plague, dying in despairing postures. The ebony clock, the flames of the tripods, and the life within the abbey extinguished simultaneously. Darkness, decay, and the red death claimed dominion over all. The grand revelry ended in a dance of shadows, leaving behind a haunted silence. The grand abbey, once echoing with merriment, now lay in desolation. The ebony clock, frozen in the hour of doom, stood as a silent witness to the macabre scene. The revelers, once vibrant and alive, now lay scattered across the blood-bedewed halls, victims of the insidious red death that had crept among them like a phantom. In the aftermath, a heavy pall of dread hung over the abbey. The corridors, once alive with the footsteps of joyous dancers, now echoed with the haunting absence of life. The remnants of the masquerade, tattered costumes, spilled wine, and fallen masks littered the floor, creating a grotesque tapestry of the night's revelry turned nightmare. 
Amidst the stillness, a lone figure emerged from the shadows. A survivor, perhaps, or an entity born from the darkness itself. Cloaked in a flowing garment, the figure moved with an ethereal grace, navigating the lifeless chambers as if in search of something elusive. As the specter moved from room to room, a subtle transformation occurred. The stained glass windows, once vibrant with color, began to lose their luster. The scarlet stains that marked the presence of the Red Death now seemed to seep into the very fabric of the Abbey, as if claiming it for its own. The once grand tapestries, heavy with black velvet, seemed to pulse with an unnatural energy. In the black chamber where Prince Prospero met his demise, the figure paused. The scarlet panes of the window cast an eerie glow on the vacant space. It was here that the Red Death had manifested, taking on the guise of a phantom masquerader. The figure extended a hand, and the scarlet stain seemed to dance in response, weaving a spectral tapestry that whispered of ancient curses and untold secrets. The specter's journey continued, reaching the easternmost chamber where the prince had first confronted the intruder. The Blue Room, once filled with the sounds of revelry, now echoed with a mournful silence. The figure gazed out of the tall, gothic window, as if contemplating the vastness beyond. As the specter moved through the chambers, the once closed corridor that connected them all began to pulse with an otherworldly energy. The walls seemed to breathe, and a low, haunting melody filled the air. The very architecture of the abbey seemed to respond to the presence of the specter, as if acknowledging an ancient pact with the forces that had disrupted the revelry. Outside the abbey, the world remained ensnared by the Red Death. The once thriving town now stood as a ghostly testament to the relentless plague. The specter, having left its mark on the abbey, now moved beyond its walls, blending with the shadows that stretched across the desolate landscape. As this first light of dawn broke, revealing the ravaged town and the silent abbey, an unsettling quiet settled, the dance of the red shadows had left its indelible mark, and the world, forever changed, awaited the next turn of fate in the wake of its harrowing encounter with the spectral masquerader. The town, once teeming with life, now lay in a shroud of despair. The Red Death had cast its long shadow, and the survivors emerged from hiding, cautiously stepping into the grim aftermath. Fear and grief hung thick in the air, a palpable reminder of the night the specter had woven its malevolent dance. The Abbey, now a haunted relic, beckoned to those brave enough to venture within its forsaken halls. Rumors of the Phantom Masquerader had spread and a sense of morbid curiosity drew the curious and the intrepid to explore the scene of the macabre revelry. As the first explorers crossed the threshold, they were met with the chilling remnants of the masquerade. The tapestries whispered of a bygone era, and the stained glass windows seemed to hold the trapped souls of the departed. The ebony clock, frozen at the twelfth hour, told a ghostly requiem for the fallen. The spectral energy that had once pulsed through the corridors now lay dormant, but the air remained heavy with an otherworldly presence. The survivors, guided by an irresistible compulsion, moved deeper into the heart of the abbey, tracing the path of the phantom masquerader. In the Black Chamber, where Prince Prospero had met his end, an ancient secret awaited discovery. The scarlet panes of the window, still aglow with an unnatural light, revealed a hidden passage. The survivors, driven by a mixture of curiosity and trepidation, followed the path into the abyss. The hidden passage led them to a chamber untouched by time. Strange symbols adorned the walls, and an altar bathed in an eerie glow stood at the center. As the survivors approached, a spectral figure materialized, the lingering essence of the Red Death. In a voice that echoed from the depths of the abyss, the specter recounted the tale of a curse woven into the very fabric of the abbey. A curse born of arrogance and decadence, seeking retribution for sins long forgotten. The Phantom Masquerader, a manifestation of the curse itself, had come to expose the folly of those who dared defy the natural order. The survivors, now confronted with the consequences of their own complicity, felt the weight of remorse settle upon them. 
the specter, neither malevolent nor benevolent, offered a choice, to succumb to the abyss or to seek redemption. As the survivors made their decision, the abbey trembled with an otherworldly energy. The ancient curse, having served its purpose, began to lift. The scarlet stains on the panes faded, and the ebony clock, freed from its spectral bondage, resumed its steady ticking. The survivors emerged from the abbey, forever changed by the encounter with the Red Death. The town, too, began the slow process of healing, as nature reclaimed what had been lost. The Dance of the Red Shadows became a cautionary tale, a whispered legend that would echo through generations. In the end, the Phantom Masquerader had fulfilled its role as a harbinger of truth. The echoes of the abyss lingered, a reminder that even in the darkest corners of existence, redemption was a choice, and the dance between mortality and the unknown was an eternal, haunting rhythm.